Uh, good morning. Um, so today, as I, as I promised, we'll uh, uh, talk about anomalies, so flavor anomalies. Um, so first of all, I, I, I want to show you this slide um, um, that um, so Zoltan started to, to make plot like this, and then uh, we're keeping it updated. So basically, what you can see there is um, uh, you know, a plot of anomalies. So you see here on the x-axis uh, the significance of the anomaly in sigma. And then here, um, um, we put how much, if you want, we believe on those anomalies in the sense that we have to, we know that some of the flavor observables are uh, cleaner and some are less clean uh, theoretically. So some have, uh, do have more, uh, you know, hadronic uncertainty and some less. And then you see basically, so going uh, in this direction, uh, the observables are becoming more and more clean. So in general, we we believe more an anomaly if it is basically in this direction here, so more and more significant, and uh, less and less hadronic uh, uh, uncertainties, so more and more clean. So here you see the, the situation of anomalies, uh, uh, flavor or CP anomalies in, uh, in the winter of 2014. Okay, so we have uh, you know, the well-known G-2, for example. We have these two uh, that uh, you know, we'll uh, discuss today, and then uh, additionally some, uh, uh, some anomaly in charm and some anomaly measured by, by D0. Now, um, if you go with this in time, so one, you want to see what are the anomalies that are you know, staying with the time, and then you see that something goes away. You see that, uh, for example, C the CP violation in charm goes away, uh, down here. And then uh, some more up here, so we have some anomaly in uh, Higgs 2 tau mu, so this is a flower violating uh, Higgs decay. This was uh, the status in 2016. This RK appeared uh, for the first time in 2016, some instead, as I said, and then uh, uh, between 2016 and 18, you see the, what, uh, what went away and what, uh, what stayed. So Higgs 2 tau mu went away. But then we had not only RK, but also RK star. Okay. So, uh, so for, for, for the rest of today, really, we, we want to discuss uh, the anomalies that you see here highlighted in this slide. Um, so these are uh, you know, uh, qualitatively different type of anomalies. So what you see in blue are, uh, if you want, a set of anomalies, and uh, in red, another set, as we will explain. Okay. So let, let's start to explain uh, those anomalies there. Um, so, what is this? Uh, so, in red, uh, you see this uh, RD and RD star. Let me take another chalk here. Um, so, these, uh, these observables are defined as a, as a ratio. Okay? So, this is uh, defined as the branch ratio of B of a B meson going to a, either a D or an excited uh, D, uh, tau nu, over the corresponding uh, branch ratio into a lepton and the neutrino. Okay? Um, so this is a ratio of branch ratios. Um, if you look at, at the quark level, so we are speaking about the transition that is uh, taking a, a, a bottom quark and transforming it into a charm quark, uh, then we have the, the, the lepton and the corresponding neutrino. Okay. So this is uh, the flower transition that we are looking at. And um, um, as, a, um, as you can see here, we're speaking about the charged current. So we are changing here the, 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 the electric charge of the quark involved in the transition. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as we see, so in blue, instead, um, we are speaking about a different type of, uh, of uh, flavor transitions. So namely, we'll have uh, a bottom quark going to a strange uh, lepton and anti-lepton. Okay. So um, basically, theoretically, as we see, there are attempts of uh, solving both of them. But, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, from the theoretical perspective, not necessarily these two observables are related uh, because, uh, indeed, as I said, uh, this is a charged current uh, and this is a neutral current. Okay? So, having said this, let's, uh, let's go a little bit into the details of, uh, first of all, of this RD and RD star. Um, 
So in terms of, uh, of leptons here, um, of course you can measure both uh, electrons and, uh, and muons in the final state. And uh, so for, uh, for muons, uh, uh, we had measurements uh, of both uh, Babar, Bell, and LHCB. Um, electrons are a little bit more complicated, uh, so muons are really you know, the best uh, you can get for, for the LHCB. Electrons actually have been done only by Babar and Bell. Okay. So Bell, uh, what I mean is uh, the first stage of Bell, and then uh, as we see, there are uh, you know, good prospects for improving the precision at, uh, at Bell 2. Okay. Um, now, let's go to the... Um, so this is uh, the plot of the several measurements. Um, so I'm showing here RD and RD star. So these are the, the two ratios that I wrote uh, uh, on that blackboard there. Um, and here you see the several measurements. So there are measurements of RD star, for example, from LHCB. This is uh, this uh, red line here. Or from Bell, the, this purple line, and so on and so forth. And then there are correlated measurements of of together are the end are the star, and uh, and then these are the the, the the circles that you see here. So this uh, blue circle is taken from uh, from Bell, and this uh, black circle from uh, from Babar. Okay. So these are all uh, measurements in this plane, and uh, and then you look at the standard model prediction, and you are here. Okay. Now, um, what about the standard model prediction here? Um, so first of all, in the so in the standard model, what are the, the diagrams that are mediating uh, this transition? What, what diagram can we write down? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, so I have a diagram like this. Here I have a double exchange, and here I have uh, you know, either my tau or a lepton and the corresponding neutrino. Okay? So this is a three-level uh, uh, you know, exchange of a W. Um, and um, so since we have a W here, what we expect is that the, um, you know, when we integrate out the W, we'll have an operator mediated by, um, with, a, you know, with a Dirac structure like uh, gamma mu 1 minus gamma 5, right? This is a, a left-handed uh, current. And, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, the core current uh, will be given simply by a charm quark, gamma mu, and uh, yeah, I can put uh, simply the left-handed projectors, okay? And then correspondingly for the, for the other, um, for the lepton current, uh, I have to pay attention to the charge. Um, so we'll have lepton, uh, gamma mu, p left, uh, neutrino. And then, uh, yeah, of course, here we'll have some coefficient, right, in front that I can compute is a, a nice three-level exchange. Now, this, um, uh, so at the end of the day, as we have learned, for example, for, me for meson mixing, to compute uh, branch ratios uh, like those, um, I will have to compute a matrix element uh, that looks like, uh, indeed, uh, um, you know, my final state, uh, here, so this uh, D or D, D star, uh, lepton and neutrino, and here we'll have to put a, bot, a, a B meson, right? Um, then, uh, in general, you know, these matrix elements here are not really easy to compute when you consider the, the hadronic part, <coughs> and these are typically done in the, in the context of uh, heavy quark effective field theory. The idea is really to, to do an expansion in uh, um, lambda QCD over, say, the mass of the bottom. You know, there is a really a huge literature on uh, you know, computing this type of uh, matrix elements. Uh, but then you see that uh, you know, we are sort of lucky that, uh, we are quite lucky that uh, we have a ratio here. So we know that uh, all this, uh, you know, the uncertainty that is coming from this matrix element uh, is going to be cancelled because of the ratio. Okay, that's why, you know, uh, there are several, several measurements of ratios 
of observables that, that are supposed to be much cleaner than uh, the, the single observable itself. Okay. Um, and in fact, uh, um, can give you the latest reference for the standard model uh, uh, computation of Rd and Rd star. Um, what you get is that this Rd is equal to 0 0.299 plus minus 0 0.003. And this guy is uh, 0 0.257. Uh, so this is uh, 17030530. So I'm writing these numbers just to show you that indeed uh, the standard model uh, we believe to you know to, to know the standard model super super well. The, her the error here is uh, you say at the percent level. Okay. Yeah, you have a question. So the vertical lines, so they are measurements simply, um, so, so if, you, if you look quite carefully to this, uh, to, to this plot, you see that, for example, LHCB has only measurement of uh, RD star. Doesn't have uh, presently RD. Um, so RD is actually more complicated to be measured by LHCB because uh, so the D star will give you also pi on the final state, so it's a little bit, uh, yeah, it's more rich as a final state. They are working on it, but it's not uh, yet available. So you see that it's simply, you know, you put in this plot a measurement of RD star. Uh, one second, I... <laughs> um, so these are the vertical, line, vertical lines here. Uh, but... The, Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But then you can also do correlated measurements uh, um, because if you want, uh, these two observables are correlated because the D star will decay to a D and the pion. Uh, and the pion is soft, uh, so you can lose it uh, relatively easily. So some, uh, you know, events c coming from a, directly from RD star could be seen as an RD and vice and, and that's why you, we have this correlated measurement and you see the circles. Yeah. Uh, you had another question? Uh, you wonder about this number? Or? Yeah. Oh, very good. So, so, so in general, uh, um, so if you look at just the couplings, uh, this diagram, no, if you put a tau or if you put a muon, should be the same, just in terms of couplings. But then, uh, you know, to explain really the number, uh, you have to look at phase space, because otherwise you would expect actually one, right, so in terms of couplings. But then uh, you have a, a very large phase space suppression when you look at the masses of B, uh, D, and D star and tau. That's right. That's why you get, uh, instead of one, something much smaller. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sitting so close to the plot, I can see the errors uh, there underneath the SM predictions. Yep. And I know the people in the first two groups there, and I noticed that their errors are three times as big as the 0.003 that you wrote down over there for yeah. whatever you have. Yeah, so um, I have to say, so I'm not an expert on that calculation, but here you see that these are all the um, 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 calculation for this RD and RD star. And, um, but... That's the R star calculation that you have up there, that is R for RD. That's right. And the D star yep. is a lot trickier to do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there is more, yeah. more, there's more structure in the form factors. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, all you young people out there, I'm multiplying her error there, 299 plus or minus 003 by a factor of 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, so I, I have to say, so, yeah, I don't have the archive number, but uh, recently, I think this March of April, there have been uh, a, a, a paper considering uh, um, electric corrections uh, to this process. Uh, and what they are showing is um, they are claiming instead of a 1% error, something like uh, 3% or so. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not 
clear exactly, you know, if it is 1%, few percent, but uh, of course, I mean, the bottom line is that if you compare, no, the central value, even if you put a few percent here, and you compare to these numbers here, you are quite away. <laughs> then the exact significance, of course, depends on the error. But uh, as you see, the error is still uh, very much dominated by experimental error. So, I mean, nowadays, I think the, the theory error, I mean, it's, a, it's good to know that it's clean, but yeah, I don't know how much serious one has to take the 1% or 2% or 5% uh, having these numbers at hand, no? Yeah. Um, okay, so, and uh, yeah, so using those numbers, uh, um, what, uh, what you can compute is the significance of this anomaly. And what you get is that Rd alone is something like 2.3 sigma. And then instead Rt star is something like uh, 3.4 sigma. And then there are people combining uh, uh, these, these several measurements, so you get something like uh, close to 4 sigma. That is, uh, you know, actually what you see here. So this is the 4 sigma circle that is uh, uh, touching uh, the standard model prediction. Okay? Um, so, so the question is indeed, um, you know, if this anomaly is uh, um, we we'll stay with more data, what do we do about it? No? Um, yeah. So, first of all, I think the main question will be to see how these numbers evolve with time, the experimental numbers. Uh, especially you see that, so this is the statistical error, so the statistical error is, uh, will be going uh, quite down with, uh, you know, uh, first of all, HCB measurement of RD, HCB better measurement of RD star, and then Bell 2 measurements. Okay, um, and um, so as you see from here, this is a huge effect because, uh, yeah, if you compare numbers, this is something like a 30% effect, okay? So this is huge. Also, you know, keeping into account, uh, especially keeping into account that this is a three level in the standard model, okay? So we expect that uh, the Nifisi scale that is hinted by this anomaly is, uh, is, uh, is pretty low, okay? Because the new physics effect is large. So let's learn a little bit what, uh, you know, if we, if we take these anomalies uh, seriously, what type of new physics would be hinted for, okay? Um, so the, the, the first thing that you can do um, right here. Um, is to write down what type of... Uh, uh, EFT we would need uh, in such a way to uh, address those anomalies. Um, so the Fatima Hamiltonian that we can write down for, this, uh, for these transitions is given by this. So you will have, of course, the, the standard model contribution. So you will have some uh, G Fermi, okay, some square root of 2. We know that we have dependence on uh, VCB uh, because of the W coupling. Um, we have uh, the operator that we saw at that, uh, that blackboard there, that I copy. So left, gamma mu, left, and then to left, gamma mu. So this is my standard model contribution. Uh, you know, either I put tau here or a, or a light lepton. And then, um, can write down an expansion in my dimension six operators. So I will have some new physics scale that I want to see what it is, square, and then a sum over C i O i. We have several operators that we can write down. Of course, so this uh, we call uh, this guy O v l. So we'll have uh, one that is given by this standard model operator, the only operator. Um, we'll have the corresponding one, uh, the right-handed current, uh, so everybody is right-handed. Be right. Um, and uh, yeah, well, this, sorry, this is uh, still left-handed, left-handed. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have, uh, so let me write down uh, all of them that because uh, actually we learned something writing them down. 
Um, so we'll have uh, p right, p right, c left, then tau right. So here I'm writing down all the you know Lorentz structures that are allowed and that are mediating the same transition. And then finally we have a tensor operator. O T sigma mu nu. Um, then I have me write down in the projector P left tau sigma mu nu P left. No. Um, and then, uh, yeah, here I can also yeah, write down uh, a few more of them is simply exchanging P left with P right, the projector. Okay. Um, now, then the question is, uh, what is this uh, lambda new physics? Uh, um, you can do fit to, to all these Wilson coefficients. So we'll have uh, five Wilson coefficients coming from here. Okay. Of course, you can do a global fit because you have several uh, variables, right? Uh, but then uh, um, what you see in this slide, so what these authors uh, did uh, was to do a fit to all these uh, uh, B to C L new transitions, just using one operator at a time. So you take uh, uh, one of those, uh, those five operators in that blackboard, you switch it on, everything else is off, and then you see how this would fit data. Okay. Um, so let's see what we learn from uh, from a plot like this. So these are uh, um, the five operators that we wrote down on that blackboard. So the the the, the Wilson coefficients. Okay. And uh, and this is uh, the chi square that we can get uh, uh, as switching on uh, one of them at a time. So what you see is that you can get uh, a very good fit uh, when you switch on uh, this. Uh, left-handed, uh, vector left-handed current. So this is the operator really of the standard model, the first one that I wrote down. Um, with the others, you know, you can have a little bit better features with this tensor operator. With the others, you don't get really much. Um, so this is actually cut out. So this is uh, the, the scalar operator, but it should be cut out here, where it starts to be more shaded. Um, so the answer is, uh, you know, if you just switch on one operator at a time, the best fit uh, that you get is through this uh, standard model operator. Okay. Um, so, so we want this guy here. So we'll want uh, basically to, to change this uh, whistle coefficient in front uh, to put some additional contribution. And then, uh, you know, you can uh, do a simple exercise to say, okay, we have this uh, new Wilson coefficient, uh, V left left over lambda, new physics square, plus uh, G, uh, four times uh, Fermi constant over square root of two, VCB square. So the branch ratio now will scale in this way as a Wilson coefficient square. And this uh, uh, has to be, uh, say, four over three, the standard model itself, so G Fermi VCB over square root of 2 square, just to give you know, an estimate, because we have seen that a new physics effect is something like one third of the standard model. Um, and then you solve this equation for this variable here. Okay? And then what you find, uh, simply sh you know, solving this, uh, is that if uh, this uh, Wilson, new Wilson coefficient uh, v left left is equal to 1, then you get that your new physics scale uh, is something like 2 TV. Okay? So from here we learn that uh, the new physics scale hinted uh, is, uh, is very low because we have, uh, you know, okay, 2 TV seems large, but actually it's a 2 TV guy with uh, uh, this flavor transition there with a three-level flavor transition with a Wilson coefficient of one, so this is large. Okay. If you think back to you know all the discussion about mean of violation and so on and so forth, you would expect that this C instead of being one in a scale like VCB, right? And then uh, you will you would get something like uh, 500 GV. 
so for uh, a MFV type of structure. Okay. So conclusion: light, new physics. Okay. So this is, uh, of course, an estimate. But when you you know you do the calculation properly, you see that the, the new physics scale is uh, not too far away from this two TV that uh, that we said. Okay. And yeah, so you will have a suppression by 1 over 16 pi square. And then, yeah, you would get a 100 GV mass scale, right? That's why it is true. So instead of doing this with a VCB, you can do this at loop. And then you get really or the 100 GV. And this is telling you that Indeed, uh, if you want to address this anomaly, the, the, the best models will be three-level models. Otherwise, it's, it's quite complicated, uh, right? OK. Um, very good. So um, let's see. Um, now that we have learned that, of course, the next step would be to see if maybe some uh, combination of operator is also giving a good fit. Uh, and actually, yeah, so there is this uh, possibility of having this uh, CV left left uh, as a solution to these anomalies. But then it has been shown that what you can have is also the Wilson coefficient of the, of the scalar operators, this, uh, these two guys here, okay, that you switch on and then you put them uh, equal but with opposite sign. Okay. So these are the, uh, call them good solutions. Okay. Um, so this in general is telling you that uh, this solution here, you will uh, think about the models with uh, say W prime, right? And instead here, you will uh, try, you know, to write down models where you have a uh, new charge scalars. Okay. So these are the two type of, uh, you know, broadly speaking, the two classes of models uh, that have been studied in the literature in such a way to address this anomaly in uh, B2C transitions. But then the question is, uh, since uh, the new physics scale here is, uh, is light, what are the constraints, right? You cannot just write down, uh, you know, some new physics uh, and then not worry about additional constraints. And, uh, and in fact, uh, you know, the bottom line is that constraints are quite... Uh, strong on this type of new physics. So let's, um, let me give you a flavor of what are the, the main constraints here. Okay. So let's start with this uh, scalar operator, so, so a charge tx. So if you have a charge tx here, um, um, what you will have is a contribution to the BC lifetime. So this is, um, you know, a B meson. This is not a B meson that we are studying for the anomaly, right? So this is the B sub C. So C, this is a bound state of a B C bar. Okay. And we have information about the lifetime of this guy. Okay. The lifetime is actually measured pretty well, so the, it is given by, okay, tau of uh, BC is, uh, yeah, 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.008 picoseconds. And the reason is that you are affecting the, the lifetime of this guy is that uh, because of the presence of this um, scalar operator, you will contribute to the decay of B sub C plus minus directly to a tau nu. Right. So this is really the, the, the same type of operator that, uh, that we wrote down, right? Tau nu with the charge ticks here. Um, and uh, yeah, when you, when you impose this constraint, also we know that actually we have also an upper bound on this branch ratio here. 
so if you open, uh, I don't know, PDG, um, you see that this is a, at most 30%. Actually, measurements of, of the branching ratios of these guys are not really too good. But anyway, if you impose this constraint, uh, then you will have, uh, uh, as a consequence, a constraint on this uh, Wieso coefficient, uh, right? And therefore, uh, a constraint on the amount of new physics that you can get in RD and RD star. If you put numbers, you see that this RD star cannot be bigger than something like 0 0.27. Um, and uh, so I can remind you the numbers, but um, so you see that, uh, you know, we, 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 we generically we cannot get uh, uh, to the central value of the measurement. So we can get a little bit on new physics, uh, but in general the new physics is, uh, cannot be really too large. Okay. Um, so these are, if you want, uh, the, the main constraints on, uh, on this type of, of models. So we have to really worry about the phenomenology of this uh, B sub C uh, meso. Okay. Um, then uh, you might worry, uh, you know, you might ask uh, what are the corresponding constraints for models with the W prime. So the operator is different, uh, so you can guess that we'll have a different set of, uh, of constraints. Actually, you know, I can draw the same type of diagram here, putting a W prime, right? So we expect that we'll have also constraints from the lifetime of B sub C. But when you compute the matrix element, uh, you see uh, that uh, this is not uh, as stringent as for a, for a scalar current. Okay. You have just to, to do the calculation. So here what you learn is that the B sub C lifetime not uh, too stringent, uh, constraint. Okay. But then uh, having a W prime, then uh, we have to keep in mind that we'll have some, uh, you know, gauge invariance to keep into account. Um, and then, uh, so what, uh, what type of operators can we also write down if we have this uh, C, B, left, left? Um, so maybe I should continue writing down there. So let's, uh, okay, let's write here. Um, so the, the, the operator that we are considering, uh, let me write it again. That, uh, uh, so B left, then we have tau left. Gamma mu left. So this is the operator that we are considering now for the second solution. But then you see that, uh, so generically, right, what we would expect from here, uh, because of the SU2 invariance, uh, I expect also an operator that looks like this, right? Uh, so we'll have, I exchange a charm with the bottom, and, uh, and then I have, again, gamma mu, B left, and then, uh, yeah, here I write the same thing as before. Um, yeah. So this is a generic uh, expectation, right? Simply because these are left-handed uh, uh, fields, and then I can replace with, uh, you know, the corresponding uh, with a different charge, right? Um, so. Basically, what I'm doing is, uh, so if I consider an operator like this, no, you see that uh, what, uh, what, um, what I'm doing is, uh, for example, to change uh, the case of the Z boson of the standard model. Let me draw the diagram. So I will change uh, the branch ratio of the Z to tau tau. Uh, so let's see how, how we get here. Um, so this is, again, a four fermion interaction. So this is uh, my BB tau tau, correct? This is what I'm getting uh, here. And then what I can simply do is uh, no, to close these two legs here 
and simply to attach a Z. Okay. I mean, just this to show you naively that if you have a four fermion operator like that, I will have a uh, you know, contribution to Z decays. And we know that Z decays are well measured by lap. So constraints, uh, so we'll have uh, constraints from lap. So Z to tau tau. So basically, we're changing the decay of Z to tau tau versus Z to EE e and mu mu. OK? And, uh, and then, you know, you can play a lot of, of these type of games. So I can also take, uh, um, I don't know, me take this operator here. That is the operator that I, I need for my anomaly. And, uh, and then uh, what I can do, again, we write down this four fermion operator. Um, here I have, uh, let's see, tau. Uh, let's see. So this is a CB tau nu. OK. This is a four fermion. Um, and then uh, what I can do is to close this, attach my W of the standard model, right? And here I can put again my, uh, I don't know, a muon and a neutrino. So what, what, what is this diagram? You have to rotate it a little bit, but uh, so this diagram will mediate uh, what type of decay? Very good. So I have a tau decay to a mu. No, no. OK. And then as we know, also tau decays are well measured. Uh, and we will get constraints. OK. Um, so these are the type of constraints that we have to worry once that we write down this type of operator with, uh, with the, the vector operator. And then again, you know, taking uh, these this, um, this constraints at face value is not that easy to hit the central value of the measurement. Um, so this, uh, you know, generically tell us that uh, it's not that easy to write down, uh, you know, concrete theories beyond the EFT that are satisfying these anomalies. Uh, but still, you know, there are ways I can also, you know, if you open uh, the large literature in the archive, uh, there are solutions that are employing more than just one particle. These constraints here are generically a little bit looser if compared to um, the constraints from uh, the lifetime. So um, if you want, in terms of really numbers of, of papers, there are probably a little bit more papers in the literature with the W prime than with the charge ticks. But this, you know, to give a flavor that um, in general is not the easiest thing from the model building point of view that you can do, it's such a way to address those anomalies in B2C transitions. Okay. Um, do you guys have uh, any question? Because otherwise uh, we would pass to the B2S transitions. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, the other ones, so if you go to this plot here, actually, so you see that... Um, I mean, they don't help too much. Uh, so if you have a tensor operator, you see that uh, you gain a little bit, but not incredibly much. And um, um, so this also, this right-handed current, uh, the vector current, uh, this is this orange uh, that, again, basically doesn't help at all. So if you just look at uh, the feats of uh, OIVFT, these are the two best solutions. Uh, the rest doesn't give you much. OK. Any other question? OK, so now that we have learned everything about uh, charge currents, uh, we should uh, pass to neutral currents. So we pass to the anomalies that you see they are written in blue. OK. Um, so let me erase here. Of course, I mean, in my opinion, uh, you know, in the future, if this anomaly in RD and RD studies confirmed, it's super exciting, theoretically, because it's difficult to, to write down models. So, so it's a challenge for us, right? Um, OK, so let's write here. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> okay, so so let's change here some uh, final state. So we are still considering, uh, as you see there, we have uh, RK and RK star. We can already guess what they are. So RK, RK star. These are VKs um, of uh, B to K or K star, uh, mu mu over EE. E. Okay? These are again uh, ratio variables. Um, and um, so let's see here. Um, so now, as I brought before, what we are doing is to consider B to S LL transitions. Uh, so this, since they are neutral currents, as we know in the standard model, they will be arising at one loop. Okay. Um, so what are the measurements of these uh, of these observables here? So the measurements. So now we are talking about mainly LHCb measurements. Okay. And the LHCb is measuring uh, uh, these ratios. Uh, is a function of Q square, where Q squared is the invariant mass of the two leptons in the final state. Okay? This is what, uh, what you see here. So this is a measurement of uh, RK star and RK as a function of this invariant mass Q square. Okay? And then, uh, uh, so you see several beams in, in Q square. Uh, so if you focus, for example, on this uh, RK star, you see an LHCb bin here below 1 GV. Um, so this is uh, the result given here. Then you see another bin between uh, 1 and uh, 6, uh, 6 GV, the other result there. And then there are also some measurements of uh, Babar and Bell, but then you see the, the error are quite larger than uh, the measurement of LHCb. And then, uh, you see also the, the corresponding measurement uh, for, uh, for RK, and the LHCb has this measurement between 1 and 6 uh, GV square for Q square. Okay? Um, so these are the measurements that the LHCb is giving us. And, uh, um, and then again, uh, we are speaking about the ratios of, of, uh, of branch ratios. Um, you can compute them in the framework of the standard model. And now, actually, you don't have really too much to worry about phase space. Uh, so you have quite a bit of phase space for a B going to K or K star, mu mu or EE. And what you see is that uh, actually these variables are almost equal to 1, okay, with this uh, type of error again. Okay. Um, so, what, uh, so first of all, what you learn is that, uh, so if you look at all these uh, data points, they're all uh, below 1, so this is 1. And up there, there is one. So you see an overall suppression, okay, of the ratio between mu mu and ee. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you just take one of these measurements at a time, so just one bin, you see that the significance uh, is uh, something between 2 and 2.5 sigma. So just one measurement is not incredibly significant, but you see that we have several measurements that are all below one. Okay. So this is the, the, the status of, uh, of measurements and standard model prediction. Um, so the, in general, uh, so we expect that uh, these variables are something like 1, and then you have uh, plus uh, something that goes like uh, the order of mq, mu square over q square. So you will have corrections if you go to very small invariant masses. Um, of this order, the mass of the muon square over the invariant mass square. And, uh, and this is actually what you see here. So in the, in the lowest uh, Q square bin, your standard model prediction is a little bit uh, below 1, 0 0.91, if you wonder about this number. Okay? Um, so this is, uh, yeah, the latest status of, of the measurements. And uh, what is, uh, if you want, interesting is that uh, LHCb so far uh, gave us results for uh, run one. So these are all uh, run uh, one uh, data, namely 7 plus 8 TV. So we are 
really looking forward to hear the you know, news with the 13 TV data. So this is a 1 plus 2 uh, inverse Fantoban that we see analyzed there. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, the question is, uh, what, what is that, right? Because uh, this is, uh, if you want, even nicer because, I mean, uh, we don't even have tau in the final state. Uh, we have only muons and electrons that are supposed to be relatively clean, uh, quite clean, especially muons. Okay? So, if we take, uh, you know, this anomaly seriously, what can we do and what can we learn, right? Because, uh, you know, the, the game is always, uh, you know, in flower physics, when you see some anomalies, you would like to understand the scale associated to that. Uh, and then, uh, if you are really sure of that scale, uh, you want to look for it directly at some collider to see what is the corresponding resonance. So now we want to do the same exercise as we have done uh, for RD and RD star, learning what is the new physics scale. Okay. Um, now, so in the standard model, uh, again, uh, the, the operator that is giving rise to these decays, uh, we have only one operator. Okay? And this is, again, the left-handed uh, operator that we can write down in this way. So we have uh, bottom and the strange, and then we have uh, mu. Um, well, let me write this, gamma mu, uh, so I'm writing here gamma 5, in principle I have also only the gamma mu, but uh, this is the, the important part of the operator when I write down the, the matrix element, okay. Um, then uh, in the, the question is again in EFT, if I consider a generic EFT, what type of operators I can write down, okay? This also, you know, serves uh, as an exercise for us to, to play a little bit with EFTs. Um, um, so, the first operator is, uh, looks like this. Um, so, I write down a, either a B right or a B left, uh, S left or right. This is a photon. This is C7, uh, what we call uh, C7 uh, either prime or not, depending on the chirality. So this is a dipole operator, actually. Because, of course, I mean, having a dipole, then I can put, uh, you know, either electrons or, or muons, uh, right? And, uh, you know, I, I can write down this guy here as a C7 prime. Then I have uh, a, uh, so a, a B, um, sigma mu nu, uh, either a projector, a right-handed projector or a left-handed, uh, and then I have an S, F mu nu. So do you agree with me that this uh, will give rise to this type of transition? Is that right? Um, do you think that this guy is important for our ratio or not? This operator? Yes, no? Whis for yes, whis for no? No, why not? That's right. That's right. So here we are considering ratios of mu mu and ee, e, and this is flavor universal, right? We have a photon. So in general, we know that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll affect uh, these type of transitions, uh, but not uh, uh, RK and RK star. Okay. I've written this down simply because, as we see, there are other measurements for this uh, B to S, LL, uh, and actually this operator can, uh, can enter in the, in the full picture, but not for RK and RK star. Okay. Um, Um, so, yeah, so in the standard model, you will have both of them, uh, with or without the gamma 5. No, so this is, uh, uh, let me write it here. Let me. So in the standard model, uh, you can write down uh, loop diagrams like this, um, where you have a B, S, W, top, and you have Z, mu, mu, or, or EE, and then also you have a box diagram. And then uh, 
yeah, um, yeah, you compute that diagram and you have both of them. But then when you, com you will have to compute a matrix element for this guy, a matrix element for this guy. And then uh, you see that the only one left is gamma mu gamma 5. The other one goes to 0. Um, yeah. That's, uh, yes. <laughs> um, OK, so this is uh, the first operator. Then uh, we have uh, four, fermions, uh, four fermion operators. Um, um, so yeah, let me write uh, B left uh, or right. Um, S left or right. Then I have my leptons. And then here I can write down uh, uh, operators like, uh, okay, some Wilson -so coefficient. Uh, then I have uh, S gamma mu, either P left or P right, B times uh, um, gamma mu L. Um, And then, uh, correspondingly, I can write down the one with gamma 5. Uh, um, so, oh, sorry, this S gamma mu P left right B times, uh, sorry, again, L gamma mu gamma 5 L. Um, yeah, I'm writing down these operators more for completeness than for, uh, you know. Um, but yeah, I have, I have uh, all these uh, vector operators with several combinations of left and right, uh, depending uh, on the chirality of, uh, of quarks. And, uh, and then finally, you see here what I'm missing are the corresponding scalar operators, uh, so without uh, the gamma mu here. Okay. And uh, so the scalar operators. Uh, that I can write down are like this. We'll have P right, left, B, and then I have a lepton, and then I have P left, right, the other lepton. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm listing here the operators. I think at home, if you're interested to this type of level of physics, you should convince yourself that this is, uh, first of all, an independent basis uh, of operators. And then this is, these are the only things I can write down, you know. You might, worry, uh, you might wonder, for example, if uh, there are four scalar operators instead of two. Here you see that I'm writing down only two of them. Uh, as an exercise, you can demonstrate that the hypercharge wouldn't be invariant for the other two, so I cannot write them down. Okay, so one can learn a lot of, uh, you know, EFT uh, using this type of flower transitions, okay? as a parenthesis. <laughs> um, OK, so having this basis, uh, then uh, uh, again, we would like to do some fit of uh, all our data and understand what type of uh, answer we get. Um, so we have learned that this uh, won't be in the picture. Actually, also this is uh, no. <laughs> uh, reason being that, uh, so you can uh, see my notes that, uh, uh, um, that um, you will find in the wiki. But these operators here will give uh, a too large contribution to B to S, uh, B sub S into two mions. Uh, this was the decay that we mentioned yesterday, that is this uh, super rare decay. And scalar operators are really giving a large contribution to this decay. And these are the same transition, right? This is a B to S uh, uh, LL mu mu. Okay. So also in general, these scalar operators, uh, you can, if you want, cross them out. Okay, simply because of these constraints. And then, uh, yeah, you are left with these, uh, you know, several combinations of vector operators. Okay. And, uh, and then you can do your, your fit uh, to data. And uh, there are several groups uh, that are doing fit to, to all this data. Um, actually, you know, beyond this RK and RK star, there are many, many more measurements uh, and searches for B2SLL. And uh, they all go into this uh, type of fit. Uh, and then what you see are tables like this, where in principle, you know, you can put new physics in, uh, in the muon current or in the electron current. Uh, in principle, you don't know where it is because we are measuring ratios there. Okay? And then uh, you see, first of all, what is the, the, 
uh, best fit for the risk coefficient, and then how much you gain if compared to the standard model. So again, we see that uh, we gain something like at around four sigma once that you combine everything. Now, the exact significance, again, depends on the group, uh, depends on many things, <laughs> but, uh, you know, to have an idea of how much, um, more or less, what is the ballpark on numbers, uh, here it is. And then you see, as, uh, as we would expect, uh, we should have an opposite sign if you put a new physics in muon or an electron, because either you want to suppress muons or enhance electrons. Okay, and then we see that uh, more or less all these uh, uh, operators are performing well. Uh, you see there is not such a difference of uh, significance. So you can put uh, new physics in muons or electrons, it doesn't really uh, change much. And, um, but then uh, it comes another piece of information. Namely, as I, as I anticipated, uh, this uh, RK and RK star are not, not, on, not the only measurements that we have of these two S transitions. But we have many other variables, actually, that we are measuring. Um, so let's see a few examples. So there is a measurement of this branch ratio of B sub S going to a phi mu mu. Um, now, if you remember you know, the composition of a phi meson, you see that, again, this, this decay here is simply a B to S mu mu transition. Okay. And then again, you see the, 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 the measurement of the branch ratio is a function of uh, this invariant mass of the two muons. Uh, what you see in blue are the standard model predictions with, with some error. Okay. And these are the corresponding measurements in the several bins. And again, you know, by eye, you, see, you can see that especially in this bin here, you have uh, some, uh, a little bit of an anomaly. So this is a, another measurement uh, that is uh, showing some uh, uh, anomalous behavior. And then we have the famous, uh, if you want, B5 prime. So, um, <laughs> so explaining B5 prime is uh, it's kind of tricky, uh, but let me give you a bit of, uh, of flavor of it, OK? So let's, um, uh, let me write here. No, well, here. So. So, so P5 prime uh, is actually an observable that was uh, first uh, proposed by theorists. Uh, the reason being that if you when you consider um, B, again, this decay, B to K star mu mu, you see that you have many particles in the final state. And in principle, you can think about uh, defining several angular observables. Uh, uh, you know, you can define several planes and then define uh, angles, uh, okay? And actually, P5 prime is really measuring uh, a, an angle between uh, uh, all these uh, four particles in the final state, since I have a, a K star, okay? Now, the exact definition uh, is, is not really a simple angle, but this has been really defined in such a way that uh, is as clean as possible theoretically, okay? So this just, uh, you know, broadly speaking, uh, if you want to know what P5 prime is. Uh. But then again, uh, what you can do is to do a measurement of P5 prime as a function of the invariant mass of the two muons, Q square. OK? Um, orange are the standard model predictions with the corresponding error. And then uh, you see the several uh, data points. And then again, you see some anomaly here. OK? Um, now, eh, then you might wonder, okay, no, there are a bit of anomalies here and there. Uh, so you can compute, of course, the, the significance of each of these bin, no? And the answer is that uh, each of these measurements is probably at the 2 to 0.5 sigma, right? You see that uh, you don't have a 5 sigma in any of these measurements, right? Uh, this is, you can see by eye. But then I think uh, from my perspective, what is very nice uh, is that if you put all together, no? So if you put this RK, RK star, then you have B sub S going to 5, phi mu mu, it's P5 uh, prime. You put all of this together, you do global fits, okay? And uh, what you see actually uh, is that you can address, you can have a very good fit uh, just putting one operator, 
Okay, that's the, the final answer. Um, and uh, so you can write down, so yeah, there are either the solution here where you have O9 or you have O9 minus O10. So there are two flat directions if you want. So either you have uh, just one vector operator or a difference of two vectors operators. And, uh, and then basically, yeah, you have just, uh, you know, this C9 uh, in front. So you have just one number. You can fit this number and you see that you have a, a, a good global fit of everybody. Okay. That's why if you want, you know, flavor theorists are quite excited about this uh, type of anomalies uh, because, uh, you know, you don't have really to have so much complicated new physics, but just one operator address everybody. Almost everybody, as I will uh, notice in a second, but, um, okay. So, even though, as I said, each of these measurements is, uh, say, 2, 2 or 2.5 sigma. Okay? Um, very good. And then again, uh, you can uh, fit with this with so coefficient. Uh, you can write it down again as a C9 over lambda new physics square. Okay? Extract a number, and what you see is that this lambda new physics uh, is something like 35 TV. If you remember, so this RD and RD star, we had something like 2 TV. Okay? This is uh, quite a bit heavier, so even if not incredibly much heavier, if you want, uh, because uh, this again is, uh, if I put this coefficient here to 1, so just a 3 level flavor change in our current. And, uh, and uh, so this is uh, yeah, the scale that would be hinted by all these anomalies in B2SLL transitions. Okay. Um, now, let me, let me show you something that uh, you know, people are not too happy about. Because <laughs> now it seems not a good story. I have just one operator. I fit everybody. We're happy about this. And indeed, I mean, this is, I think, a great result that uh, at least all these anomalies are going in, a, in a one common direction, if you want. But um, the, the thing that is a little bit complicated in this framework um, is the following. So as you see here, I, I'm approaching the problem in, from an EFT point of view, right? Um, and then the idea is, indeed, uh, I have this operator. It will give us uh, some contribution that has uh, a Q-square dependence. Okay. But then, uh, if I do so, then I can uh, now compute uh, what this EFT would give me in this, uh, for example, RK star as a function of Q square. No? And what I see, actually, I don't have a plot, but I can tell you um, uh, yeah, in words, um, is that what I, I see is that for this bin, I could fit it very well with this whistle coefficient. And the same for that uh, bin uh, over there. The same for B sub S going to phi mu mu and so on. But what is more complicated is this bin here. Okay, so this is the bin below 1 GV square. So let me write here. Um, so, uh, So, so this is uh, an open question. So, low Q square bin, say below one GV square in R K star. Um, so this, uh, you know, you would have the same problem also for RK, but then you see, you see that for RK, LCB is not giving us the measurement for the low Q square bin, so we don't know what is going on there. They, they do have just, uh, uh, for RK, this bin between 1 and 6, so you don't know below 1. Okay. Now, uh, for RK star, basically, yeah, what happens is that... Uh, I, I'm going there, okay. yes, yeah. Um, so in the standard model, um, basically you have, 
yeah, you have contributions uh, from uh, K, and then, uh, yeah, let me put, a, how do you call it, gamma. Um, so in the standard model, basically, what you have at low Q square is a pole coming from the photon. Okay. So you see that uh, the standard model contribution uh, uh, simply to, 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 to one of these decay will go up okay, because of this uh, large photon contribution. And then uh, you, know, you can do the calculation, but basically your EFT has trouble in competing with this uh, photon pole contribution of the standard model. So bottom line is that if you put uh, this famous operator with this 35 TV um, new physics scale at uh, you know, the new physics uh, in, the, in this low Q square bin uh, would be almost zero. So it's, it's very, very small. Okay. Because it's, uh, if you want, it's enhanced in the standard model by this photon pole. And then, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, that operator is great because it satisfies everybody, but at the end of the day, this low Q square bin uh, will be very much standard model-like uh, without new physics much. Okay. So this is uh, you know, an open problem if you want because from the theory point of view, you cannot really address it in the, in the framework of EFT. So since I have uh, uh, to do, yeah, want to do a small advertisement, but uh, yeah, so last year we wrote down this paper here where we show that uh, in principle, you can think about having light particles like in the low Q square bin, and then you can do it uh, not in the framework of EFT, but simply in the framework having some light dark particle, okay? Light, light, below the muon threshold. But still, you know, it's a question mark from the theory point of view. Now, from the experimental point of view, as you were mentioning, uh, uh, so I, I'm not uh, in the LHCB collaboration, so I think that uh, Theorists, uh, you know, should listen to experimentalists a lot <laughs> for their measurement. But there are, uh, you know, questions about uh, how uh, how reliable uh, is this measurement at low Q square? Reliable in the sense that what we know is that going to lower and lower Q square measurements are becoming uh, more and more difficult, uh, especially for identifying uh, electrons at uh, such a low Q square. So this is uh, simply a an open question, and we see basically with more data, especially to you know to this pin here, what what uh, what will happen to it? Okay. Okay, and uh, so this was, if you want, a small parenthesis, but uh, I think we should um, you know keep it in mind. And then uh, you know there are many additional checks that LHCB could do because LHCB, in the next. Uh, you know, run of analysis could also show us, uh, you know, the result for uh, RK at low Q square, could show us the result of many additional observables, right? Um, so, you could, uh, you know, you could think, uh, so for the future, um, there are additional observables that LHCB could measure, uh, for example, could define this R phi as uh, indeed uh, the ratio of uh, branch ratio B sub S to phi mu mu over B sub S to phi E E. So this is not available yet, but this is some you know, additional measurement that LHCB could do. And this would test the, the same type of lepton flavor universality. This is still a B to S uh, mu mu or E E transition. Uh, and you have many of them, right? Because you could, uh, you have the lambda baryon. Um, this could give you lambda mu mu, could do lambda e e. So this, uh, okay, if you are <laughs> not familiar with the lambda baryons, but this is a UDB and this is a, um, UDS. Okay, so there are many more observables that LHCB could measure and will measure, I'm pretty sure of that that can give us information on these lepton flavor universality ratios. Okay. And, uh, and the last thing I can, uh, can mention, me sorry, mention here is, uh, again, if you follow the parallel with what we have done for RD and RD star, you can uh, wonder about what type of new physics theory is. You can write down uh, for this operator. Okay. And, uh, and again, you have two types of uh, new physics theories. So I can write down uh, one diagram here. 
So you have either Z prime here, you have a B, S, uh, and LN. So, of course, I mean, from the theory model building point of view, the question is indeed how you get the coupling like this in a, in a theory, in a concrete theory, and then uh, why you are breaking the, you know, the flavor universality between mu mu and the electron electron for a Z prime. Okay. So there are two classes. So one class of models is models like this, and then the other class of models, uh, uh, so these are Z prime, and then you have, uh, I'm sure you have heard about leptoquarks, Um, that can still give uh, this type of operator. And then uh, the corresponding diagram would be something like this. So you have Bs, uh, and then your muon or electron, uh, muon and electron, and this is my electro quark. Okay. So again, if you look at uh, the huge literature in the archive, uh, really the, the theories, uh, most part of the theories can be put in these two classes, Z prime or leptoquarks. And then, of course, you know, again, uh, the, the question is how you test directly these new particles. Uh, uh, you know, broadly speaking, these are a little bit more hidden than the particles for RD and RD star because uh, the new physics, new physics scale hinted is higher. But still, you know, there are very many interesting measurements that, uh, and searches that you can do at Atlas and CMS uh, to see if these particles really do exist or not. Okay, so this is, uh, again, I wanted to give you an overview of these anomalies and uh, a little bit of theory associated with it, but uh, it's uh, pretty much condensed. So if you have, uh, you know, additional questions, uh, I'm here. <laughs> so, questions? So here, scalar contribution is not possible because of the BHP. That's correct. Yeah, so... Um, you will see my notes, so yesterday I, I let you guys choose if you wanted to do dark sectors or be sub or rare decays, but uh, so <laughs> for, uh, for rare decays, uh, uh, so B sub S into two muons, uh, you see that in, in, the, in the standard model, uh, this branch ratio is proportional to mass of the muon uh, square. Uh, and you can demonstrate, I mean, just looking at the operator in the standard model, you see that uh, you have this dependence and this is what is called uh, Helicity suppression. Um, that is telling you that indeed that this branch ratio will be super tiny. Indeed, it's something like 10 to the minus 9. Now, if you switch on uh, scalar operators, uh, what you see is that uh, you don't have any more this, uh, this suppression. That's why scalar operators in general are putting up uh, this branch ratio quite a lot. And that's why when you do your feet, uh, is, uh, you know, with this. Uh, with this operator here, you end up having troubles immediately. Okay. Other question? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, so these are, you know, the, this is a variable that. Uh, that is not as clean theoretically as ratios, no branch ratios, obviously. And the, and the, um, and the idea is that uh, actually the, the beans that you really trust are these beans below, say, 8 GV or so. So above here, um, you have several resonances. Uh, for example, you have the J psi resonance, and uh, things are getting more complicated. And uh, I think, uh, you know, there are techniques to also compute the standard model here but people do not yet uh, trust uh, the prediction uh, so much. Uh, and, and then indeed, as you can see, there is no standard model prediction here for these higher Q square beans. Yeah. But this, uh, I think, can be you know, improved in the future. And uh, yeah, let's see. But um, yeah, in general, as I said, I would trust more these beans here at lower Q square, theoretically. Um, Mm -hmm. um, so for uh, uh, so let's see I have uh, um, so I think we did right <laughs> so 
let me see what basis I used. Um, so, oh, they're still here, sorry. Um, yeah, you have, uh, so I'm putting here the, the projections, either left or right, and here is uh, where the, the gamma 5 is entering, uh, right? Um, so the, the particular choice of basis is just the choice. In principle, no, I could write down any linear combination. So instead of having this linear combination here, I could write, uh, I don't know, the tau, gamma mu, gamma 5, tau. No, instead of left-handed projector. But uh, I mean, as long as I have an independent basis, then uh, I can choose whatever I want. Uh, questions? On anomalies. Yeah, so 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 the question is uh, so I mentioned this uh, uh, this ratios here, this ratio here that can be measured. So this is not measured yet, but the only measurement that we have is simply the measurement of the branch ratio that you see here on, on the numerator. This is a mu. But we don't have the corresponding measurement of EE and not a correlated measurement of the ratio. And this, of course, would be, I mean, the ratio would be much, uh, if you want, nicer because uh, no, theory uncertainties will cancel in the ratio. Yeah. But of course, it's also nice to have just uh, one branch ratio measurement because this uh, would break you know, the, 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 you know, the flat direction between muons and electrons. And you need some measurement that is telling you if you want to have new physics in muons or electrons, and ratios are not telling you this, right? <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm around uh, today until 3 o'clock or so, so if you have any other question on anomalies or any other Think that we discussed during these lectures, I would be very happy to discuss. Okay, thanks.